Are you sure you've got the right night, Peter? It's definitely tonight's episode, Tom. I must admit, I'd never heard of this television programme until they asked me to appear on it. Born in Croydon in 1971, Darren Brown has become a world-famous mentalist, illusionist... It's very author. popular, is who do you think you Since are? Debut, People like to watch Darren celebrities Brown crying when they find out who they're related to. Yeah, well, like when that bloke from Corrie found out he was setting cousins with Hitler. Yeah, you don't see him in much anymore. Well, he died in that bunker, didn't he? Darren has produced several Sorry, other shows for the Darren who? The chap you met, Peter, for the show, The Magic Man. Oh, oh, yes, 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 I remember the chap. I don't really know what to expect. I'm hoping, what I'm hoping to discover is that someone in my family... Well, don't panic. Old Peter Knight showed him a thing or two. Well, it's not supposed to be a hard-hitting political interview, Peter. My grandfather's, or my father's side of the family, though. And where's Alan? Is he not watching it with us? He's holding the TV aerial up on the roof. Having discovered this new lead in Cumbria, Shh, here we go. head up to Plum House and speak to the museum's curator, Peter Knight. Hello, Peter. Ah, good afternoon. You're just in time for tea. Ah, I'm hoping Earl Grey will suffice. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. But I believe you have something interesting to tell me. I certainly do. Hmm. Did you know that in Latin, gerund is actually the gerund of gerere? Right. No, um, I didn't. But something interesting about my great-great-great-grandfather, Jeremiah Brown, who was actually a gardener, I think. Ah, oh, yes, the infamous Jeremiah. Yes. Now, I've dug these records out of the archives. Oh. Here, you can clearly see... Ah, uh, yes, gosh. So that's, yes, that's very old-fashioned... Um, Handwriting, it's all Greek to me, I'm afraid. Doesn't know Latin, doesn't know Greek, yet they tell me you're a public figure of some eminence. In which field? Well, yeah, well, I'm a sort of a mesmerist, I suppose. So the BBC have sent a sorcerer, eh? No, 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 not, not, not at all. Your black magic is useless here. Your imps can't harm me, Peter, please. No, I... Ah, in... mustn't let the tea grow cold. How do you take it? If you'll allow me to play mother. Oh, uh, Peter, you haven't got any trousers on. I can't for the life of me remember where I left them. But the cameras? I... Oh, are they actually filming now? Yeah, so that's the point. So, yeah, no, this is, so this is why we're here, to learn about my great-great-great-grandfather. Well, well, why didn't you say? <sighs> Look, I think we've rather hit it off on the wrong foot, old boy. Would you like a jelly, baby? Oh, go on. Perhaps when the camera stopped rolling, you could turn it into a real baby. Some sort of moon child. I can't. I can't, I can't do that. Four hours later, and after much further confusion... Now, let me suggest what your great, 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 great grandfather's life would have been like. We have a persuasive power of the flute. Look, there, that's, that's my hand tapping Darren on the shoulder. I was trying to show him one of my card tricks. I, I used to be a bit of a magician myself. Darren finally makes a hasty exit from Plum House with a little information about Jeremiah Brown. Now, Peter, put the, the sword down! Charlie, get the car! Return, wizard, from whence you came! All things considered, I think that went rather well. <laughs> what saw were you watching? To be fair, Darren was one of our more satisfied visitors. My only regret is buying that trick deck of cards and not getting to use it. I can't believe this. It was bad enough that you both kept this filming secret from the rest of us, but then to be so rude to a celebrity on national TV... Uh... And we... hmm, well, that's weird. What is it? Well, I've got, like, ten texts. It's not your birthday, is it, Tom? No, it... Well, it's people who are watching the show. So bloody hell, I've not spoken to him since uni. Say nasty things, are they? I don't blame them. No, they're, they're not actually. They're all, they're all saying they enjoyed it. Get over. Well, of course they enjoyed it. Oh my God, you're trending on Twitter, Peter. Marvelous. Sorry, what is Twitter? You've even got a dedicated hashtag. Your very own hashtag, Peter. You've made it. Well, it's hashtag so British. It seems that people found your eccentric antics well, quintessentially British, Peter. People have been famous for worse things. <laughs> Enjoy your 15 seconds whilst it lasts. You'll be long forgotten by morning. Yeah, for all you might have briefly entertained a few people, Peter, the damage you've done to Plum House might be irreparable. I wonder if my arch-enemy Mungo Prin was watching. Julian, let's send him a VHS tape, just in case. Really make the man sick with envy. Will do, Peter. Oh, that's it, I give up. My mum off to bed. Right, Maureen. Pick a card. Any card. 
Right. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> Alan, what are all these coaches doing here? And why are you hiding behind that bush? All these cars and coaches were here when I arrived. I've been too scared to start work. There's dozens of people waiting to get in. Why have you got your arm in the air? I think I've done something to it, holding that TV aerial up all night. It won't come down again. Uh, how did you manage to go to bed? Sleep's one big waste of time, Tom. That's what my cousin Eric always used to say, right up until the day he died. Oh, what was wrong with him? Who knows? He was 33, lovely head of white hair, and he had these wrinkles on his forehead, what you could stick a 50p in, and it wouldn't drop out. Right. Come on. Let's find the troops, Alan. We need an emergency team meeting. Right, everyone. Look, we don't know for certain this sudden influx of visitors is related to Peter's TV appearance, all right? Perhaps it's just a coincidence. Give it a rest, Tom. Listen to that crowd. Ah, has anyone ever heard a more euphonious sound? Peter's famous. Jethro Tull even retweeted a clip from the show of him playing the flute. Jethro Tull? The 18th century agricultural pioneer? Contacting me from beyond the grave? I knew we should never have trusted that thaumaturge and his dark arts. Oh, think of all the merchandise I can sell. Peter, we'll have to get your face on some tea towels. Peter Knight, authentic swords for children to chase people off the premises with. But the museum isn't designed for this many visitors. I have a clicker for counting people in and out, and it only goes up to ten. Yeah, Alan's right. Now, we need to carefully plan for how we're going to cope with this many tourists. And I really... Come on, Thomas! I can't keep my public waiting! Peter, no, wait. <laughs> Old chaps! Anybody ready for a dainty slice of Peter Knight? <laughs> Let's get this show on the road! Action station! No, Peter. Once more onto the breach, dear friends. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! Wait for me, Peter. They'd probably want to see both of us. They might recognise my hand. Right. Anything else, Alan? You've got your hand up. Is that a question or are you just still stuck? It's a bit of both, Tom. <clears throat> there, that's better. Um, can you just let me know when all these people have gone? These bookmarks, it says, it, says, it says two for three. Is that, is that two for three? Can I just remind everyone in the gift shop that signed photos of our sore British curator are strictly one per customer? <laughs> Can I have a bag? Yes, um, certainly, although we actually have a new environmental policy. It's part of a plastic-free plum house. It's one of my initiatives. I'm afraid we charge five pence per bag. Tom! Oh, it's the megaphone. Strictly necessary, Maureen. We don't charge 5p anymore. Oh, I know. You don't like us charging for bags and you think it's somehow funding communists in the EU. But we need to... No. Carrier bags are now a quid. or into demand. Oi! I hope you're buying that. Hold on. Uh... I should really get this. Just hang on a minute. Hello, Charles. Tom, are you there? I wanted to discuss Peter's appearance on TV last night. Now, you have to believe me, sir. I knew nothing about it. I just wanted to say what a fantastic idea the whole thing was. Yes, well, as I was saying, to start with, I didn't know anything about it. And then it all became quite heavily my idea. Plumhouse is trending online. Who'd have thought it? It's fantastic news. Isn't it just... But as you know, the Heritage Trust's word of the year for 2020 was online engagement. I still maintain that's two words, sir. So I just wanted to give you a big aural thumbs up. We're all about getting the Heritage conversation started on tomorrow's technology today. OK, well, thank you, sir, and thanks so much for calling. As you know, it's an honour to work for the Heritage yeah, Trust right, and... right, Tom. Nobody likes to suck up. Did you do these in any other colour? Do you? Uh, Maureen, oh. we're after some change. Oh. Oh. What for? People are actually paying for selfies outside with Peter. With Peter? I don't know which is crazier, 
that folk are daft enough to pay her that Peter knows what a selfie is. It took some explanation, and he's still a little concerned the Chinese government might be able to steal his soul. Wait a minute, if Peter's taking selfies and you're collecting the money, well, who's giving tours of the museum? Alan. Alan? But he doesn't know out about the museum. Exactly, so we've got him giving tours on the lake instead. Right, good. Uh, well, hang on, what lake? What do you mean, the pond? Well, that's tiny. Yeah, you've got to think big these days. Um, welcome to the Plum House Aquator. <clears throat> On our left is a duck and uh, another duck, if, uh, if you have them, in Japan. If you don't, um, I'm sorry. And on our right is, it looks like, a piece of white bread. Uh, oh, it is. And we're there. Uh, that concludes the Plum House Aquator, and that will be ten pounds, please. Which button, Julian? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, yes. Now, has everybody got a self-taken telephone photography button? <laughs> if you don't have one, then come and gather round. <clears throat> Allow me to tell you a little bit about my trousers. They're red cords, replacing a much-beloved pair that sadly caught fire. One... <coughs> Michaelmas! Sorry, I could do with a cough sweet. My wife bought these cords for me, though from what bazaar, I'm afraid, I know not. In fact, I'm not entirely sure I know where my wife is. <laughs> Has anyone seen her? She's about this big. <laughs> Thank God that's all finished for today. I, I didn't stop serving for eight hours straight. Tell me about it. I could hardly remember what dry land felt like. Hey, uh, what, what time is it in China right now? Uh, I, I, no idea. I just want to ring the sweatshops in Beijing, get some extra special Peter Knight merchandise ordered up. That is a joke, right? Y you're joking. Ni hao. Joy shu. Mori long staff. Gong. Long house. She was joking, right? I'm not an expert in humour, Tom. My idea of a good laugh is... Well, I'm not sure. I, th I think things are getting a, a little out of hand round here. Do you think I could get a speedboat for Alan's aqua tours? The pond's only 15 feet wide. Mm. Hovercraft? Please welcome to the meeting room the man they call the cool rater. Oh, Julian, we do. Of Plum House. He's the wit in the waistcoats, the king of cords. The... We know who Peter is. Tom. It's OK, Julian. Tom and I go way back. Way back. Before Peter Mania. How are the water tours going, Helen? People say they're a bit overpriced for what they are. Look, hang on, I know it's only a pond, but are we insured for taking visitors on a boat? Is the museum insured at all? That's always been one of the great mysteries of my time here. We certainly gave that man on a moped a lot of money once. I, I think he said he worked at insurance. Yes, well, it's little things like this, well, big things, actually, that we need to stay focused on now. I know today's been exciting, but let's make sure we put the museum first. You know, that's the mistake I used to make, Tom. I was always trying to get people interested in this house. Pudding's poetry, that said. But it turns out that what people really want is me. You. Yeah. I'm as surprised as you are, Tom. Is it my charisma or my intellect? Some have said genius. That's probably it. All wrapped up in a very agreeable package. Oh, the grannies love me, the mums and the kiddies too, and let's not forget the lad. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Thinking about it, I'm a kind of a sexier Michael Portillo, if such a thing can be imagined. I might seem a bit staid, a little safe at first, but there's this sense I've really lived that anarchy lies just beneath the surface. Peter, I'm getting rather concerned that you're putting this fame, your own ego, before the museum. Do you know how much this man's just made for Plumhouse? More in a day than we usually take in a year. And, and this is just the beginning. <coughs> Sorry. All right, I really do need a cough sweet. Don't worry, I'll sort you out. Look, I know that Peter's TV appearance has certainly helped bring in, you know, a few more visitors, but we don't want our newfound popularity to be some flash in the pan. I mean, we all know that people will soon be bored of taking pictures with Peter. How dare you? You're talking about a national treasure, Tom. Don't worry, Julian. He's only jealous. You see, there's a hip new record on the Milk Bar jukebox. Got all the cool cats digging it, and it's called Peter Knight's Theme. Come on, Julian. Coming. 
Has everyone around here gone mad? Maybe I could do tours of the grounds in a helicopter. You shouldn't let him speak to you like that, Peter. Oh, I never paid Thomas much heed. Why should all that money go to the museum? I mean, it, it is Peter Knight they're coming to see, after all. Keep talking to him. I like the cut of your jib. What I think you need is someone to manage your business affairs. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm in need of a Svengali. You need a plan, Peter. What's next? TV? Music? Your own world tour? It's not for me to say, but if I was you, I'd be thinking Hollywood in the next two to three years. Really? I mean, I have always thought I'd be perfect in an MGM musical. Imagine me belting out my signature tune. Up goes the curtain, and then behind me... 10,000 Peter Knights dancing on a revolving stage. I wonder what Busby Barkley is doing these days. I can see it. I can just see it. Well, Peter, it's clear there's only one man for the job. Who is he? Telephone him at once. No need, baby. He is right here. You? I have tons of showbiz experience. Really? I organised a disco in my college bar for Rag Week, and it, it was quite a success. Uh, men to finish at bang on 11. No word of a lie, they were still boogieing at 20 past... I did not know this adventure in the crazy world of pop. Oh, I am very well connected, Peter. My uncle once played at a golf day with the man who managed each 17. Is that some sort of terrorist organisation? You see, Peter, this is why you need someone looking out for you. Not only do I bring a wealth of experience, I've got your best interests at heart. Now, that can never be denied. Where do I sign? We'll sort the contract later. Just shake my hand. Gladly. <sighs> I feel like we should get some big cigars to smoke. No, we tried that once. Do you not remember? You had that dreadful asthma attack. <clears throat> Talking of the pipes, my voice is feeling very hoarse from all that chatter with the fans. I really need you to sort me out some cough drops, old boy. Wouldn't want me losing my voice now, would we? Better make it an extra large pack. Morning, Maureen. Whoa there, stop. That'll do. Have you seen Peter? Not yet. Go on. Open her up. Oh, have you ever seen so much gift shop merchandise? Smell that, Tom. Do you know what that smells like? Plastic and fudge. Smells like success. Well, I'm glad you're pleased. Ah, there's Julian. He might know where Peter is. Julian! What are you... Are you coming? The grounds of Plum House are non-smoking, you know that. Oh, I'm not going to like the cigar, Tom. It just uh, suits the new role. Oh, what new role? You, you didn't do anything in your last role. Uh, I'm Peter's agent. I manage him now. <laughs> you know nothing about show business. Well, that's where you're wrong, Tom. You see, I've had a key role in already securing Peter his very own TV show. What? How? Well, a producer rang me last night and said they wanted to make a pilot with Peter presenting it, and I said, yes, OK. So your key role in all this was saying, yes, OK. It's all about the way a manager says these things. Yeah, fine. Can you just the... tell me where Peter is now? There's coach loads of people here to see him, and they're starting to get a little bit impatient. Oh, well, you see, me and my client Peter have decided that he's a bit above meeting and greeting the general public now, especially as the film crew are arriving this PM, as we call the afternoon in the biz. They wanted to snap him up before any other production companies swoop in. And... Where is he, Julian? He needs to get out here before the visitors start leaving again. Uh, never you mind. We don't need to involve... Uh, hold on, if you'll excuse me a second... Hello, Big J Talent Agency, Julian speaking. Which one of our clients are you calling about? Ah, Peter Knight, yes. Oh, for God's sake. Peter, are you in there? Peter? No way. Oh, my God, Peter, what's happened? What are all these wrappers on the floor? I have to keep my voice in check for the public. These can't all be cough sweets. Without my voice, I'm nothing. How many have you had? You're only meant to have one every three hours. That advice is for civilians, Tom, not celebrities with televisual obligations. Peter, I really need you to pop outside and say hello to some of the visitors who've come to see you. I don't need them anymore. I've told you, I've moved on to bigger things. And to star in my own television show. Professor P comes to tea. They're thinking of calling it. It's a highbrow, hard hitting, groundbreaking format where I meet distinguished luminaries for tea and biscuits. Okay, but and some of these people have driven hundreds of miles to see you, Peter. And would you just drive to Ralph Richardson's house? 
and demand an autograph? Would you suddenly appear at Tommy Trinder's doorstep and beg a signed photo? I'm not even sure who that is, Peter. Are you seriously telling me you won't be coming downstairs at all today? From now on, I'd prefer it if you only spoke to me through my manager. Yes, tell Julian to get me some more cough sweets. By the box load! How are you getting on? They're getting pretty angry, Tom. We're going to have a mob on our hands at this rate. Where is he? He's not coming. What? Tell him to get down here right now. Uh, It's no good. Peter won't budge. I think someone's going to have to give them the bad news. Well, don't look at me. I've seen mobs like this attack people before. I've been in mobs like this that have attacked people before. And I don't like delivering bad news to people, or any kind of news. It's why I didn't make it as a postman. We'll need tear gas. Rubber bullets. Honestly, give me the megaphone, Maureen. Uh, hello, everyone. Sadly, owing to one or two personal issues, I'm afraid that today's meet and greet with our curator, Peter Knight, is unfortunately cancelled. But don't worry, uh, the museum is still open and I am sure you'll find the fascinating world of George Pudding. Give me that thing. The gift shop remains open. We now have Peter Knight's famous George Pudding lectures available on compact disc, cassette tape and for the tech savvy amongst you, mini disc. Go on, be on your way. And don't come back. You are? You're all leeches. Blood-sucking leeches. What a horrible man. You're joking, and I've got from Oscar. Come on. And uh, do you know when Peter will be arriving? It's just we're already running behind, and we'd like to get this screen test done before... Linda. 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 Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Sorry, look, I know you might be a big shot director with your, your big shot camera crew here, but I'm also a big shot manager slash talent agent, and my client, Peter Knight, is also a big shot viral personality. So we're all big shots here, hmm? Capiche? Not really. I just want to know when Peter will be appearing. Well, I've cut off his supply of cough sweets, so he should be with us very shortly. But uh, he did have a few thoughts on the script. He hasn't seen the script yet. Exactly. He'd, he'd, he'd like to see a script. Where are they, Julian? Oh, uh, Peter, uh, uh, they're here and ready to film when you are. The kettle's just boiled and... Not these imbeciles. My cough streets. I need my lozenge lifeline. I just need to get completely decongested. Hi, Peter. Uh, I'm Lindsay. I'm directing the Professor P Comes to Tea pilot. Uh, we thought it might be good if you just did a bit of improv on camera first. Uh, repeat some of the things you said when you met Darren Brown. Oh, that's what this is, is it, uh, Peter? I'm just a puppet. No, at least a puppet moves. I'm just a tailor's dummy. Well, there's much more to me than that. Much, much more! At which intellectual heavyweight have you booked for today? Who shall I be speaking to? Well, uh, obviously it was short notice, and it's just a screen test, really, so our options were limited. David Starkey? We go way back. Uh, no. One of the Jonathans? Meads, bait, dimpleby? Uh, we've actually got Raoul from Bake Off coming. Uh, he should be here any minute. He's running a bit late because he was having a nightmare icing a cake for his local leisure centre. Julian, what is going on here? I've already voiced my concerns, Peter. They could at least have got that sexy French one. What was she called? Man on it? I mean, it's a couple of years ago now. I can't quite remember what. Is anybody even listening to me? Is there a voice coming out of my mouth? I need another cough sweet. And break it into powder for me. It'll get into the system quicker. Just, just take a breath, Peter. Uh, that's it. If you could just face the camera, Peter. Uh, no, sorry, that's a light you're facing. Yes, I know what I'm doing. I'm not a half-wit, you know, and your audience, they're not half-wits either. Sorry, Peter, if you can just... What the flip is this man doing now? Uh, That's our cameraman. Hi. Well, what's he doing there? He's in my eyeline. Uh, He needs to hold the camera in your eyeline, Peter. Oi, you! Do I come to your work and stand in your eyeline? Do you know who I am? Right, well, uh, good morning, everyone. I'd just like to start the meeting by giving my commiseration to Peter as I hear that the BBC decided uh, not to go with his Professor P pilot in the end. It didn't help that you pushed the lighting man over Peter and then started strangling for a hall when he helped himself to one of your cough sweets. Yes, it appears my brush with fame may have slightly inflated my ego. One day of fame and you turned into a monster. That level of celebrity is hard to cope with, Maureen. It's no wonder I turned to the dangerous, nay, deadly world of decongestants. 
How Cliff Richard has stayed on the straight and narrow all these years is anyone's guess. But thanks to your timely intervention, I'm now two days clean. Excellent. But I'm afraid to say, ever since people started tweeting about your behaviour, the visitor figures have fallen steadily, and yesterday our numbers sadly dropped back into single figures. What? Zero? Well, yeah, but still technically a single figure. On behalf of myself, I'd like to apologise. Apology accepted. Uh, and Julian? Yes? Just anything you'd like to add? Uh, nothing jumps to mind. It was you in his ear encouraging him the whole time. That's what great managers do, Maureen. They encourage their clients. They support them through thick and thin. They turn a blind eye when they're assaulting TV crews or throwing a teapot through a window because no-one's brought them any lockets or tunes. Yeah, now Alan's having to fix that window. Then who's manning the Aquator? I'm afraid the Aquator has been liquidated, Peter. A travesty. I never even got to have a go. Hey, the real travesty is that I've got a lorry load of novelty T-shirts and themed fudge sitting in the shop with nobody to buy it. Those T-shirts cost me just over two yuan each. Sounds pricey. It's almost 20 pence. Yes, again, I'm still not sure about the ethics of using a sweatshop, Maureen. I'd prefer it if you never use one again in the future. Don't worry, I've learnt my lesson. Ah, oh, good. The stitching's bloody atrocious. They should be using adults, really. At least they'd have a bit of pride in their work. Right, that's not... You know, OK, look, what's important is that we go back to basics, OK? The whole escapade has done nothing for our public image and it's going to take some focused hard work to win back the favour of our visitors. Thomas, consider me a new man, willing to bend to your every caprice, putting my ego to one side for the good of this fine museum. <laughs> that's music to my ears, Peter. There's nothing like a crushing public humiliation to bring one's self-esteem back down to size, to draw out the humility of a man... Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. There's a phone call for Mr Knight. Who is it, Alan? It's a television man. Apparently, the Amazon might be interested in Peter's series instead. Julian, go find my cough sweets. Will do, Peter. Professor P is back on Broadway. No, Peter... If you want an autograph, you'll have to speak to my manager. Don't worry, I think I still have some signed photographs in the office. Hold on. No, Julian, I don't want it. I'd better go and order another few thousand T-shirts, just in case. Maury, don't be so ridiculous, we don't. <sighs> sure, I sometimes think me and you are the only same people at this museum, man. Yeah. <laughs> so can we get that helicopter, then? Plum House was written by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. It starred Tom Bell, Simon Callow, Jane Horrocks, Miles Jopp and Piers Quigley, with Emma Denley and Alex Lowe. It also featured Darren Brown. It was directed by Paul Schlesinger and the producer was Claire Broughton. Plum House is a BBC Studios production.